Hello all, and welcome once again to Sunday Q&A. Uh, right, we go straight into it with, uh, oh yeah, I said I was going up to Scotland. That was a weird one. Um, I had the delivery uh, last, um, I had stuff to drop off in Cambridge last Monday. Then I was going to Livingstone. So I was fetching it like about 10 o'clock in the morning, going to drive up to Livingstone, get as close as I could, stay overnight. Got to Hemel to my pickup, wasn't there. It was one of those, it's sort of, it was supposed to be there AM, then didn't turn up, and it turned out the driver's got to go to hospital, as the forky said. Oh, he didn't have a puncher then. <laughs> the standard two excuses, either the driver's got to go to hospital or he had like a puncher. Um, so I didn't end up going to Scotland at all, but thank you very much for your help. As Neptune Courier says, he says, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> reliving stone, easy place to drive around. He said, my bread and butter is Glasgow, I can go to Edinburgh and everything in between. You will see more loads out of Glasgow, uh, Edinburgh, than Living, Living, uh, Livingstone. When I tip in Livingstone, I usually head towards back towards uh, Glasgow and sit in the Euro Central um, the hub for big companies. So there is work in Scotland, apparently, <laughs> from someone who's in Scotland. For me, because I'm travelling such a big distance, I would have put on a pickup distance of 50 miles, even 100 miles, because I know I'm going to be travelling 400 miles home. And if you're going to go that kind of distance, you don't mind travelling quite a way to pick it up. Also, Steve Campbell, the nefarious Steve Campbell, if we've now christened him, um, I used to live in Livingston. Uh, it's got a good road network. There used to be a hotel off the junction um, near Deer Park. I think maybe premiering, and he also said because I did the video on Liverpool, he says I know loads of loads of lads from Birkenhead. I met them all in prison. You don't say. <laughs> so anyway, but thanks very much for your advice, guys. Do appreciate it. As it turns out, I never made it up there anyway. But right, so this week's videos. Three things I like best about the CX. Now I did the video, and I did think it might be a bit like, "Here, Barry. Here, look, mate. He's he's doing that thing again." But actually, he was all very kind. So I appreciate that. It's sort of um, my mate David Winter, Dave the Crisps, uh, my, my friend, the guitar player. He says, oh, yes, freedom, but it comes at a price. Uh, but, um, it's worth everything. Yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, so uh, Van on the Run says, couldn't agree with Pete more. He said, it's all about the freedom of the adventure. And no two days are the same. I get a buzz every time I finish a job. I will say I get a buzz every time I finish a job. I will get a buzz every time I finish a job well done or a difficult job and I make it go. I mean, I had one this week. Oh, mate. It was, oh, in fairness, we'll come on to that. Yeah, but it was the one that went wrong. But anyway, not that went wrong. But like I said, not every day is a happy day, but we'll come on to that. Um... Once again, Neptune Curry says um, he's out tramping tonight. He says it's good to be reminded of the good points. A pal of mine said when all is said and done and dusted, in the last days you probably won't say, I wish I took that job to JCB to make an extra 50. Thanks for doing the groundwork and sharing. My pleasure. It is that thing, isn't it? It's like there's no gravestone that says, I wish I spent more time at work. But at the same time, I think we all know that the reason we go to work is to bring in the money, to pay for the family, to pay for the bills, to pay for security, to maybe buy yourself a new hat or you know sort of get a holiday from time to time or get a week off at Christmas and although none of us wish we spent more time at work we're all very relieved if the bill comes in and it gets paid so we do what we have to do uh, Yorkshireman's Daily Grind he says he did, he did make me smile with this one he said um, I remember my teacher at school saying I'd never get anywhere in my life by staring out of the window and that's what I do the most now <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you're taking that one into consideration, are you, really? Either that or maybe if you've got a job in an aquarium. It's not quite a window, but it's glass. It's the same kind of thing. Um, I did one on Not Every Day's a Winner. And because I wanted to be honest. I keep trying to be honest with you. And Brandon George said, first time I've ever heard you moan, I hope tomorrow is better for you. And he was like, well done. But I wasn't moaning, you know. It's okay. It was a bit of a stressful day. And as it turned out in the end, um, it actually panned out well. But the reason I've done it, and I actually uploaded a video, the one on the taco, which is not, it's not going to be for everybody, but I kind of, you know, for those that need it, like, you know. Um, but I started, I knocked that one off and put this one on because it was kind of live. And you'll know if a video is live because it comes up without any cards, and without an end screen. But I just... I wanted to catch it on the moment because if I go back the next day and you reflect on it, you probably get, no, nah, it wasn't so bad. But when you're sitting and you're sweating and you've run out of, you've, I've drunk all my tea and I've run out of squash and the wind is down and I'm, I'm in a traffic jam on the way to the, the 25, well, this is the way to do it. Because, you know, like, and particularly it's kind of an antidote to the three things I like best about the exchange. I do like it. 
I don't love it, but I like it. And I'm happy that I've got a job that I like. But on the flip side of things, um, you are going to get days, you're going to get days much worse than that one. But you're also going to get days of an absolute dream. And I'm just trying to be a little bit more balanced about the whole thing. So, um, as BK, B. Carroll says, it sounds like a quick summary of the industry. For anyone who's new to this, systems do mess up, people do load the incorrect goods, and you, you can't prevent this from happening. No need to stress, I'm sure you'll be paid for your hassle. Well, it's funny you should say that, because what happened was, the lady I was speaking to, it was a nightmare. And what had happened was, they've got this furniture contract, it's for a very big firm on the um, exchange, you'll all have heard of her, they're a spin-off of the Stobart mob, you know? And, um... I was speaking to the lady at kind of head office and she was obviously very switched on. And she said, we're pulling out of this warehouse. So now we're pulling out this warehouse. The warehouse staff, they weren't brilliant to start with, but now they've got absolutely no incentive to get it right. And if it hadn't, I said, if it hadn't have been for me, this would have gone horribly. I'm not blaming my own trumpet here, you know, sort of Mickey Spear. But um, if it hadn't have been for me, it would, and she said, yes, I know that. But what's, what happened in the end is I loaded the box on. I was stuck with a box. And then she said, the box has got to go back to base. And I thought base was in Northampton because that's where I picked it up from. And she said, base is, oh, I can't even remember where it was. It's somewhere north of Manchester. Nutsford. And I said, well, the load I'm picking up now has got to go to Wrexham in the morning anyway. And I've got it all on. Got it up to Wrexham, and she said, uh, "Got it." Then, take, then I've got got the Wrexham load off. Got one box left on. It's got to go to Nutsford, and she said, "I've got a load that's coming out of Nutsford that needs to go to Aylesbury first thing in the morning." And I went, "Oh, if you can do that, that's a dream because I'm I'm pushed on my driving time, so it'd be great if I can just pick it up, drop your stuff off, drop your box off, pick it up, and then drive home." It's exactly what happened. The only thing was the Nutsford job was the Nutsford to Aylesford job didn't pay that much. But what we did is we geared it so the the extra money on the job that failed, like the the re delivery cost and the extra waiting time, which again was more than fair, and the Nutsford job to get the Nutsford to Aylesford job all worked out. So I did it worked out very well in the end. So there's me having a little moan, and as it turned out, it all turned out quite well. But um, yeah, it happens. Uh, Daniel W says, we all have your day. Yes, we do, my friend. But hopefully we have good days too. Uh, Godzilla says, just giving examples here. Got stuck in Dunstable today. Two hours of hitting refresh and getting nowhere with everything heading into London where I didn't want to go. Oh, uh, well, tomorrow's another day. It's a bigger problem for me now. The whole of London, pretty much inside the 25, might as well be underwater. Because it, in fact, that's another ironic thing. Tomorrow, Sunday, well, today, this morning, when you're watching this, I've got to deliver a lorry load of furniture to Soho which I won't get paid for, for reasons that will become clear in in about January, February. It's all to do with child. Um, but it's nearly over now. But, oh, God. <laughs> I, I, lo I, I took Friday afternoon off, come home and spent two and a half hours loading a truck with furniture on my own, some of which was very heavy. But you learn tricks with sack barrows and tail lifts. But it, it, hopefully it's not going to be worth it in the end. Anyway, off to Soho on Sunday. But she means the child's coming with me. So she's going to get the first ride up in our list. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. Taking my lorry, taking my daughter out for a drive in the lorry. Sunday morning, got ran back on the radio. I can think of worse things. Um, Addy, the real Slim Shady, he said, yep. He said, did a job today. Urgent MK to Bristol. Sat there for four hours and counting. Bristol can be a struggle to get out of. I find the best thing to do is once you pick the MK job up, start searching for Bristol. Thinking I'm going to be in Bristol in about two and a half hours. That gives me two and a half hours to find something coming back. And give yourself a wide search radius. Because you might not get out of Bristol, but you might get Andover. I've driven from Bristol to Slough before to pick a job up. But then Slough was going from like Slough to... Oh, it was somewhere really close, like say... In the right direction as well. So kind of like Slough to Watford. And it paid a lot of money. It was lighting for, um, you know, sort of like for TV lighting, that kind of thing. They loaded it quickly there, unloaded it quickly. I've got about 180 quid for like 15, 20 miles. So I thought, well, I don't mind driving from Bristol to Slough because then I know when I get from Slough, I've only got to drive down the road and I get my money anyway. So RP says, appreciate the honesty. No one talks these days. I do. I talk too much. Uh, David Winner. He says, get your hair cut before you pull it out. Another day in paradise. Living the dream. Be lucky. Yeah. It's falling out anyway, mate. Oh, I don't know, mate, you be. Can I carry that off? Get some gel in there, you know? No. Um, I can see myself, by the way. That's why sometimes I look here, which is where I'm supposed to look, and sometimes I look here because I can see me. Um, 
Anonymous. He says, 300 mile product return. Here's a circular sort and 200 envelopes. Bye. He said it was 100. Have you ever had that before? That's an interesting question. Have you ever had... I once had to return 10 pallets. Um, it might have been more than that because it was in a truck. And I think the money I charged for... Say I charged £150 for returning 40 pallets. And I'm thinking, if you hire a pallet... You, or you buy a pallet for about three quid. So 40 pallets would be 120 quid. It would be cheaper to... I worked out it would have been cheaper for them to leave the pallets where they were and just get some new ones. But I, it happens. You know, these things happen. Uh, van on the run. There must be something in the area. So I did one job yesterday, 60 quid. Without the bad days, there wouldn't be good days. It's true, and they don't come that much. Ian Shepherd said, look at my hair, it's ridiculous. <laughs> he did make him smile. It is ridiculous. I do need a haircut. But I've been busy. I've got a thing going on with a kid. Um, and Jim Godfrey says, Pandas, I nearly spat my drink out. Yeah, I was pleased with Pandas. I actually nicked that off of, um, I think, Adam Sander in a film. But I did like that. It made me smile. Uh, right, miscellaneous. Uh, oh, that's gone black. That's the main name guy. And then for some reason, the, the, the first line's printed alongside the second line. He was saying that back in the day, you know, back in the old days, if it was before 10 o'clock or before 12 noon, some days you actually had to phone in to say you were coming. Yeah, I know that was before the world went 24-7. I remember when shops used to shut on Wednesday afternoon. It wasn't a bad thing. Okay, so you, you might have run out of milk, but everything was quiet. Um, he said, no delivery is worth more than your taco break. If at RDC you ask the forky where you should park before you park to the forky, he said, put it there and put it on break as an ex-RDC forky. Yeah, if you're going to have a break, it is a bit of a grey area because theoretically when you're on break, your time should be your own. But that doesn't mean that you can't park the lorry, put it on break, walk over there, get a bench, get your flask, have a cup of tea, watch something on Netflix and then come back and the lorry's loaded. So you can actually take your breaks while you're being loaded, but you've got to have free time. You can't just be sitting there sort of moving the curtain backwards and forwards or cleaning the windows or just waiting. That doesn't really count, like, you know. Um, Ian Merrick, he's, he's regarding the JCB thing, because, you know, something JCB and they've changed their, their tune recently. I wonder if word has come from the top um, due to the negative commentary put out on social media and the complaints of wait time for HGV drivers. As for the glasses thing, um, as I've said before, you desire subconsciously to take over where Ronnie, Ronnie Barker finished in the two Ronnies. And it's good night from me. I'm actually thinking of changing my name. Charlie McFarley. There's a contemporary reference for the 18 to 20 years, what, 21 years. I can't remember if it was Charlie McFarley on the other one. I remember the um, the Phantom Raspberry Blower of Old London Town. Kind of used to scare me as a kid. I was only about five. Kind of find it a bit frightening, you know. Um, like I say, I imagine that's gone over most people's heads. Well, I don't know. I'm... <laughs> Are you all old like me? I don't know. Uh, Craig MCG125 said on the POD front, for every completed job I post an invoice, my original POD and a printed version of the CX POD. Uh, envelopes cost three, 0 0.3 pence, paper cost 5p. He's actually gone into this. Stamp is 66p. Is that how much stamp is now? Okay. It's less than a pound for each completed job and it saves late payment we haven't received your POD. Dead right, Craig. We, I will be even with the firms that say we don't, require PODs, don't send us PODs. It's a bit like the waiting time thing. I charge £40 an hour, you pay £25 an hour. By accepting the jobs, I accept your terms. But I say by accepting me, you accept my terms. And then we have an argument with it. Um, regarding the PODs, we send PODs to absolutely everybody, but we put on our CX thing, as a matter of course, we send hard copy PODs. Because that way they go, I didn't want your PODs. Well, tough, we send them. You know, you accepted my job, you get the PODs. And it does, for the sake of a quid, it's going to save you a lot of time, grief and effort. And it staple your POD to the back of your hard copy invoice. And that way, if they say, we didn't get the POD, you say to them, have you got the hard copy of the invoice? And they go, yes. And you go, it's like a little trap. And you go, well, in that case, you have got the POD because I stapled it to the back. You've lost it. Um, and if they still win, you can just print off the scan off the um, CX app and just send them it again. And if they pretend they've lost it again, then they're just chances. Uh, WCML Traction says, I'm very lucky where I live. I'm in the satellite town of Coventry. So I have Leicester, Birmingham right on my doorstep with the M60, M69, M1. Can't wait to start. You're in a decent area, mate. Should go well for you. With every decent area, you'll get more vans. But at the same time, better to be in an area of 20 vans and 10 jobs than being in an area where you're the only van and no jobs. Because if there's no jobs, you can't get a job. 
Uh, you know where I am if you need any help. We will obviously we'll pass it on to people who actually know and they'll answer your questions. I'll just voice them. Uh, Hiskey Boy says, CPC, was there a test at the end of the five days? Thanks for the in info. No, no, not in England. In, um, or not in, the, in Britain, rather. I think it, abroad, some of them do tests. You know, maybe if you do your CPC, I don't know, Turkey or Germany or sort of France, they might do a test. We don't. From the point of view for CPC, you've just got to turn up and stay awake. There, there was one guy, they were saying there were guys that started drinking about 12 o'clock and one of them actually physically fell asleep and they had to kick him off the course. I did wonder sometimes how there were some of the foreign nationals doing the CPC and they were asking the odd question how strong their um, actual grip of the language were and how much of the, it they actually got. But again, being able to understand your CPC is not a prerequisite. You've just got to turn up. The, to, to pass the CPC, you've got to turn up and stay awake. And that's it. And we just count that one as a, we're going to chalk that one up as a win, I think. Um, Tivioso Cornwall says, Hi Pete, what percent of customers pay within a week? What's the longest you've had to wait for a payment? Hope all is well. I don't know. The office does this. I would say 99% of people pay, and the ones that don't pay, we threaten to take it to court anyway. So we get most of them, well, pretty much all the money back. How quickly they pay, you'd have to ask the office. Sorry, I don't know. I'm on the other side of things. And finally, digging for history in Ashman says, Loving the wooden beams. Not in the wooden beams today, we're in the wooden shed. We're in the shed, Brie. But the beams in the house are 400 years old. They are really, because the barn is 200 years old and they're built from the beams of old ships. And if I've got any time left to do a link, never remember it's this way or this way, I'll do a link. And finally, in conclusion this week, in what has turned out to be a slightly shorter Q&A, which isn't such a bad thing, uh, from the nefarious Steve Campbell, just keeping you up to date with um, my man up north. He says, hi, Pete, I've been sacked again from Courtland's Bread this time after six shifts because I posted a video of their broken down truck on YouTube blocking the entrance to a school. Well, I suppose it's, you know, quite right. You shouldn't do that, really, should he? I was sacked Friday last week. So I've been finding my own week in an old taxi, uh, parking in a car park, very close to taxi rank and telling punters I'm available. Yeah, that's not legal. You can't pick up off the street. You have to be booked by telephone. But I'm sure you probably know that. Um, I got a new job with an agency as a loot and driver. Started 2 a.m. Monday to Saturday, Gate said. Um, and the address he's delivering to is caught and spread. He says, um, can't, you know, says, um, he's assuming that they won't kick him off, bearing in mind the fact he's not driving for them, he's driving with someone else. And finally, we may be on the move in the new year to the Midlands around the Nuneaton area if my wife gets offered to relocate with her job. Probably find some work down there easy enough. I have ADR written on bits of paper, not a qualification, but surely I can blag it. How hard can it be to transport Caligas cylinders? So there's the nefarious um, Steve Campbell, soon to be the exploded Steve Campbell, when he drives his lorry down the road and it goes back. <laughs> I really hope not, mate. I really hope not. I would miss your contributions. So, that's it. Quick one this week. That's cool. Uh, yeah, what are we doing? I've got Soho tomorrow morning. And then a bit of peace for a little while. So, I'm going to go and see this one up on the video now. And you guys can take care and take money.